Greetings and salutations, friend. I am Jeremy Tank, and welcome to the Manifest Design Experience. In this group, you are here to uh, learn my branding process, and really, uh, that branding process can apply to your business, your personal brand, any products or services that you launch in the future. This is a really dynamic and creative process to help you uh, see the world, be a better you, do all the things you want to do. It's really strategic. That's what we are doing, aligning with where you are now with where you want to be. So I've got three things I want to talk about today, and I've got my little post-it notes so I can remember this. First thing, we're going to go over the exercises this week. We had two exercises and one little addendum, uh, and you can find these if this is your first time viewing something uh, in this group. You can find these in the guides where I have posted all of the exercises along with the instructions and all of the extra little things. I will do this every week until we get through my entire process. The process itself is seven stages. And in each of these stages are at least two or three exercises and at least a couple of different flyers that give you some more information just about the exercises, about your own mind, about your own power ability. If you join this group, you also believe in the law of attraction because that's one of the questions I asked. And sometimes people say, I believe in it, but I don't understand how it works. And some of what I'm going to be going through, the extra information is all about the law of attraction, the laws of the universe, energy and manifestation, and how that really combines with your mind, your perspective, your beliefs to help you build the life you want to build. So without further ado, we are going to jump right into this. I have allocated about 40 minutes for this today to talk to you. I hope to come underneath that. Uh, but since this is the first time I'm doing one of these live videos for the group, we'll just see. Um, so starting right off the bat, oh, I, I mentioned in uh, exercise one, that you may want to start a brand binder for yourself. Now, a brand binder is really a collection of these exercises, a collection of uh, notes that you take about yourself, about your mind, about your future, the things you're trying to go for. And it's just a central place where you can put everything all together. And a three ring binder is absolutely perfect for this. And actually what I prefer, just so you can see what I'm using here, because this is my, uh, this is a clipboard at the moment, uh, is, is one of these. It is literally like an old report uh, folder from uh, grade school, high school, whenever I use it. Uh, you can take it completely apart and put as many sheets of paper as you like in here, three hole punched. And that's actually what I'm doing. You and I, uh, to make this easier for us both, um, I'm actually going to do these exercises with you as you are downloading them, doing them on your own time. I'm going to be doing them as well for a project that I've been working on in my head. And the project, just so you know, is a, uh, a, a health retreat, a series, a, a set of health retreats across the country. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill in these exercises based on this idea. And I want you to fill in your exercises based on yourself, your brand, your concept, whatever it is that you want to use this process for. And that's the thing. You can use it for your business, which I will refer to as your brand, because that's your business brand. You can use it for yourself, which would be your personal brand. If you have products and services, each of those have their own brand. And the thing about the idea of brand is it's just, it's stacked. It's like one of those uh, Russian dolls that's little ones on top of big ones inside. You know, it just gets bigger and each one encompasses a little bit more meaning, a little bit more uh, for your customers, a little bit more how you provide service a little bit more about how you think about the world and how things come together for you. So the first exercise is called the axis of perception. Get that nice and close for you. If it's not backwards, it's not, hooray. Um, and the, uh, the, the point of the axis per of perception is to get just an idea of the character of the brand that's in your head and how to express that character and character meaning like you know happy sad uh joyful it's like the seven dwarves you know there's different characters have different attributes in the way that they view the world and approach the world and so when we're thinking about your brand we actually want to think of it in terms of a character a persona a voice something that speaks to the world and connects with the world and this exercise the axis of perception is the first step in that. It helps create the foundation. And that foundation is the way that you see the world and the way that you see the brand interacting with the world. So right off the bat, let's see if I can angle this right here. Uh, I'm looking down at my computer and trying to make this all work. So in the future, I hope to have this all on screen so you guys can see it as easily too. So what we've got is uh, contrasting pairs. 
on each of the lines. And what you want to do is place a dot, a mark, at some point in it that you feel is appropriate. So the first line, for example, is masculine, and the opposite side of that, the contrasting side of that, is feminine. And, you know, these are not meant to be offensive. These are not meant to be uh, anything other than general archetypal sort of, like, high-level thoughts. And so... Uh, for what I'm working on, I'm actually thinking something a little bit more, not quite in the middle, but a little bit more to the feminine side. So I'm just going to put a little dot right there. You can kind of see, eh, there's the camera. You can see I just put a dot right there. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this sheet. Uh, classic and modern, I'm looking at much more... Ooh, I've got a combination of thoughts in my head. And so I'm actually going to choose something right in the middle. Approachable or authoritative, I'm going to go very approachable. Fun or serious, I'm going to go more to the serious side. And I like choosing, I, I like choosing quarter marks or three quarter marks, but you don't have to put where there's a mark on the line. You can just put a dot wherever you feel you are comfortable with the idea of it of it going. Uh, sporty or elegant, uh, ooh, neither of those. So I would say somewhere in the middle in that one. Simple or intricate, I'm going to lean towards simple. Conservative or extravagant, this is a little bit more extravagant that I'm working on. The health retreat, right? You want it to be extravagant. You want someplace that is not the normal, like, city, conservative sort of thing. You want to get away from that stuff to relax. So this is sort of how my thinking process goes about this. So that would be a little bit more extravagant, someplace to get away, to relax, to pamper yourself, to treat your body and your mind and yourself to peace and harmony, right? Uh, next is necessity or luxury. So this would definitely be more luxury. Uh, professional or casual, very casual. But I'm not going all the way to casual, because all the way to casual to me says, like, you know, board shorts and sandals. And I definitely want a place where people are um, not quite that casual, but definitely relaxed and dressed down. So I'm putting it at about the three-quarter mark. And then extreme or safe, we definitely want very, very safe. Because people need to be safe to feel comfortable to open up to... Um, let go of, of their traumas that they face on an everyday basis and actually start working better with themselves and feeling comfortable with the environment, right? So all total, this is what my sheet looks like. This is going to be about what your sheet looks like, too. And once you've got that, you finish the first exercise. Congratulations! It's time for a small party. Yay! Uh, so I'll go ahead and move on to the second exercise. Exercise two is called Start Where You Are. And the whole idea is that as we start building brand concepts, as we start building on the foundation of what you want to build or what you are already building and you really want to, you know, keep building it and can create momentum for the future, we need to know where you are now. And that's just realistically, um, every map starts with here and now, right? You've got to know now and be kind of honest about it. And uh, this is the first time I've done this on myself in a long time, so I'm being completely honest here as I go through it, and, uh, you know, roll with it. This is this is life. This is the way it is. And normally, when I'm working with people and going through these exercises, I will ask them questions to help jog thoughts. I will, um, I will challenge and ask, just lots of clarifying questions, and that's really my task when I'm working with people in this process. Um, on their business, on their brand, working on things like that. My job is to facilitate, to get as much out of it as possible in every in every um, session, so that uh, not only is there movement, it's it's very rapid, very uh, powerful movement. So, uh, start where you are. Looks like this. So, if you get this exercise in front of you, and see, I follow my own advice. I print it out and I put it in my binder. This is just the best way to do things. Uh, so the whole point here is that you choose a score from 1 to 10. 1 being, I kind of suck at this right now, and you got to be very honest with yourself to be able to select something like that. And 10 is, I am the freaking master of this. I have got it down. My life rules. I, I totally get it, and it's working right now And these different areas. And I kind of got this idea from the Lifebook people. If you're familiar with Lifebook or... Um, well, I forgot their name. Jim something. Uh, they have, like... 13, 14, 15 different areas of the life that they ask you to rate 
and uh, create strategic goals around so that you are constantly pushing forward all those 15 areas. You don't need to deal with those 15 areas because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven areas right here just for you to kind of focus on and that that's enough to get a, a foundation. So let's see. The first one is celebrate and contribute spiritual. So how is your spiritual here? How is your spirit or faith? Do you generally contribute or take? How often do you celebrate life? Well, right now we've been in the middle of a pandemic and you know, we've, uh, in my household, um, what you're seeing is my bookshelf behind me. We, we scaled down from a, a big house to this little apartment. Um, just because that's the way that uh, my wife and I have sort of like managed this pandemic and, and managed ourselves and our affairs. So we don't do a lot of um, celebrating. We don't do a ton of uh, paying out. I would actually put this at about a four right now. She and I are both very spiritual and we have faith in life and the universe. So I'll put it at about a four. And then finances. How, how do you... How do you feel about your money? Are you in charge or does money rule you? Well, that's another area I'm definitely working on. So I'm going to go ahead and put, um, I feel good about it, but I don't feel great about it. So I'm going to put a five. Work, career, mission. Do you have a job, a career, or a mission? Are you happy <clears throat> and growing in your work? Well, this is my work. Manifest design is the work that I do. It is a branding process that starts with all of this foundation, the strategy, and then moves into design strategy, which is, um, past my my initial eight steps and that is something i'm actually going to go through in this group if there's enough interest in it is how to do a design strategy how to tell if the colors are working for you if the um the fonts the 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 pictures that you show actually work in your favor for your brand uh so i i'm working on my career my mission right now you guys are helping me refine this process make it work for as many people as possible in all different ways so i'm going to go ahead and put a seven right there i feel pretty good about that time do you feel scarcity or abundance never enough time or always plenty of time i am one of those that uh <laughs> i'm always learning to say no and that means that i'm usually saying yes so time to me is something that always seems to slip away so i'm gonna put a six there i feel good about time but i feel like it could be better so about a six relationships do you have healthy relationships intimacy ha uh, happy love life good sex all stuff that's really important, right? This is the stuff that, that life is about. And I feel like that's pretty good right now. I feel like I can always improve, but I think it's good right now. So I'm gonna put an eight. My wife might put a nine, but uh, I'll put an eight. Um, emotions and meaning. Are you an optimist or pessimist? Are you proactive or reactive? And really, this is, this is so internally focused, like how you feel about things and how things are moving for you. So I'm gonna put a, a ooh. I am an optimist. I believe in things moving forward. I have faith in the universe and how things are going to turn out and how things are moving for me at any given time. So I'm going to put a nine. I know that things can get just a little bit better because things can get on a road. We can move out of this apartment, right? So things can always get better. Uh, physical body. How is your energy, your health, your vitality? How is your self-image? Mm. <clears throat> That's why I said we got to be real honest about this, right? You're starting with me on an honest day. I would say that my physical body is probably uh, at a four right now. I need to lose some weight. I probably uh, need to get a haircut. <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I know these things. They're things that I need to schedule and work on. I'm being very honest and real about it. So I'm just going to go put that, go ahead and put it down in there. Now, the next step of this exercise is on this circle page. And you can see it in front of you, or you can see it on the computer in front of you, that there are light lines going through uh, circles all around this thing. And what I'm going to do is using the numbers on <laughs> using the numbers on this sheet that I just wrote down, I'm going to go ahead and pencil in, or you know, sharpie in, as the case may be, uh, about one, two, three, four about where each of these land. Finances is a five. Uh, work career is a seven. Uh, time is a six. Relationships, eight, seven, eight. And I'll show you what this looks like in just one moment. 
Um, emotions and meaning, let's say nine. And then physical body four. Boy, that looks really low all of a sudden. That's what happens when we're real with ourselves, right? You look at the numbers, you're like, oh. There's so much about the way that the brain works and the mind works that disassociates where we are now and what we're thinking, what we're actually experiencing from the reflection, the rating, the truth of it. We hide from ourselves. The brain uh, hides from ourselves how we're actually doing in a lot of ways. And it's a survival mechanism. In a lot of ways, it's a trauma-based survival mechanism of disassociation. And when we disassociate how we actually are, we can't reflect on it properly. So putting numbers down is just a game to help our brain see, well, that's that's how we feel today. And there's nothing wrong with how you are, any of these numbers whatsoever. You could be one all the way around. You could be uh, one or two or <clears throat> just base levels all the way around. And all that means is that's how you are now. And that's good because that means you are training your brain to see where you are so that you can grow. Without seeing this current status, your brain doesn't know where to put energy in. Your subconscious doesn't know where to focus on growth for you. So this is a hugely powerful um, tactical tool to help you just see and train the mind in the areas that need help and need improvement. So I colored... All right, drew lines all the way around, and now I'm just going to color in each of these squares so you can see what this looks like. Squares. Uh, pie slices, maybe? Pie. Mm. It looks like a very weird pizza. So here's the way that mine looks. Just kind of filling it all in. You can see, you know, here's the fours, and then five, six, seven, eight, and here's the, the nine that I was talking about. And that definitely gives a sense. Let me color in a little darker on these fours. Because four is something I, I definitely want to work on, right? Physical body and the celebration, the contributing, the spirituality factor, knowing where I am and how I am. Like, that's that's important. That's hugely important. Okay. So, <laughs> colored it in just a little darker so you could see those fours. And... Okay, so the last sheet of this exercise looks like so. And I'm not going to go ahead and, and well, I'll, I'll talk you through some of these. So the basic idea here is that most people move through life looking at the different areas of their life and inching forward, moving just little bits at a time up the scale. So turning four into four and a half or four and a quarter. At the same time, turning um, fives or sixes into you know, five and a quarter or, or um, it's just very slow movement because we try as, as our mind, our body, our focus shifts given whatever it is that we're focused on, we tend to inch forward on small areas at a time unevenly in life. And what happens is that that leaves us wanting in other areas. So this last page is showing you that like, there's the hard way, which is what I just described, little bits at a time. And then there's the easy way, which is seeing that there actually is a hierarchy to the way that um, achievement, understanding, feeling, uh, gratitude, uh, the way that we approach life, the way that we, where we place our energy, there is a hierarchy that affects things above that. So the first question, what area of your life have you completely mastered? Well, according to these numbers, uh, emotions and meaning, emotions and meaning would be pretty good. And emotions meaning are, are you an optimist or pessimist? So that's really an internal dialogue with myself. Do I feel confident? Do I feel uh, proactive or reactive? So I feel pretty good about the way that I see the world, the way that I interact with the world, the way that I interact with people. So that's that's pretty good. I feel good about that. What is the strongest area for, for me? Well, that would be the emotions and meaning. Um, what specifically have you done to become the master of that area? Well, <laughs> Uh, before the pandemic started, I, I went to, got, got a master's degree, which led me to questioning everything, which then led me to a lot of reading, and that led me to hypnosis and training the mind, learning how the mind works, um, and how, how to talk to myself better, how to talk to others better, how to really understand things like that. I put a lot of education into that to get to that point. So, you know, that's really important to understand for myself. What one area of your life, if you focused all the efforts on it, would you improve your overall life quality? 
If you're unsure, find your weakest areas on the pyramid to the left and select the area closest to the base. So my weakest areas were physical body and the celebration. Well, we can see in the hierarchy when you look down at your sheet that body is actually number one. That if I took the time to improve my body, if I took the time to exercise more, if I took the time to diet more, if I treated my body hmm, better, that's a hard truth, isn't it? Oof. <laughs> if I treated my body better, then it would affect my emotions better, my relationships better, my time better, my work better, my finances better, and my spirituality better. So really the base of this temple is the body that I should probably be treating better. Hmm. <laughs> Truth time, right? This is how this happens. We need to reflect and come to that understanding of where we actually are. And this is me experiencing it in my own process with you live. <laughs> okay. Um, so what was that other area? Celebration and spirituality. So the spirituality, interestingly, is at the top of this list. So as I look at this, we can see that maybe it won't focus. But body, body and spirituality are separated. So my two points of interest are separate. So by really starting with the body, I'm going to affect everything that comes after that right up to the top of that cycle with the spirituality. That seems like a good place that I should really start things, doesn't it? Okay. And the last question, how would you improve if you mastered this area? Well, it would affect probably my emotions. It would affect my relationships. It would affect, it would affect everything, right? Because it's the base of the pyramid. And that's the thing is when everything is stacked on that, when I feel, let me put this another way to myself. When I feel good in my body, when I feel positive about my body, when I feel healthy, when I feel uh, uplifted and ready to go, energized, then everything else flows from that easy state, right? Okay. Do you see how you might be able to apply the same strategy you use to master your top area to this area of your life? Well, I spent a lot of time and a lot of focus on the the mental, emotional um, e part of it. I put a lot of time and effort into that because I find that uh, easier for me. Uh, my, my focus is generally mental and creative and, and interest in those areas. So if I actually took that same energy, that same effort, that, and applied action through it into my body, yep, that's that's how it might turn around. So with this exercise, I also posted a couple of additional questions in the guide uh, section on the website or on, uh, you know, if you're looking, it's up above guides. Uh, and, you know, I would love if you guys uh, took pictures of your exercise, posted it online, shared with one another, uh, shared your thoughts about it, shared you know, how you feel about it. And there's because there's some more things like once we start to see some patterns, which is what happens, it's, well, that's why it's important to share these things because we start to notice patterns and when we notice patterns we can help each other more by pointing out the patterns and learning things about it for example the one of the things that i uh really want to share is at the bottom of the uh exercise one and the the quote that i put is one of the primary functions of the brain is to perceive contrast and to align our behavioral interests with familiarity so one of the <laughs> The brain loves contrast. That's what helps us see things. And every time that we uh, walk too narrow down a middle lane or don't see um, side to side, we are reducing contrast. And that basically is like putting, that's like not standing for anything, not taking the next step, not standing out to anything. So when we look at the axis of perception, what I'm looking for is not necessarily right down the middle, because down the middle, says that you don't want to draw a line between these two contrasting pairs. It, it says you're not really standing for anything. And because of that, your brand will have a harder time standing out to an audience because you're trying too hard to apply these thoughts, these efforts, everything you're doing to everybody versus, you know, the ones who might be right for you based on your perspective. That's why this, I started saying this is your brand's character. This is how you see it. And as long as you aren't uh, as long as you you are trying to be true to you and what you think then you're going to have contrasts that become high and what we want is areas of higher contrast and i'm going to go ahead and show you i put some arrows here 
and the higher contrast areas. And higher contrast just means it's, you know, one side or the other. And you don't, so it doesn't have to be all the way, like simple and extravagant to me are not all the way to the ends, but they are enough that I can consider that a contrast. And by combining contrasts, we create a character for your brand that is more interesting. And by interesting, I mean it's more likely to grab your customer's attention uh, and just anybody out there attention because approachable and what we do literally is combine the two opposite words so that we can hear how that feels, right? We hear it and then we get a feeling based on that approachable extravagant, approachable luxury, approachable safety, simple extravagant, simple extravagance, simple luxury. Like all I'm doing is choosing the words that are highest contrast and putting them together. And because of that, that's how the brain works is by recognizing contrast around you and what you hear and what you see. Um, and that's, that's because of the fight or flight response. It triggers these reactions within you. But if it's something that you want, if it's something that becomes familiar, like as part of your brand, and it's something you start sharing with people over and over again, that familiarity, right? When somebody recognizes that contrast, it, it lures them into the familiarity of what you're doing. And that gives you an opportunity to connect with them deeper and take the next steps. And the last thing I want to go over is Marissa Peer's Rules of the Mind. That's just she. This is not an exercise really, but this is something that I learned in uh, hypnotherapy school that I, I'm kind of shocked that we don't teach this, the, just the concepts of it more to everybody because the brain, <laughs> The brain is, is the physical organ, like your hand, right? You can see your hand, you can touch your own hand, although, you know, the thumb doesn't touch itself, the fingers don't touch themselves, you have to touch something else to recognize it. Um, but a hand doesn't, a, a, a hand alone is just the hand. It can pick things up, it can move things around, it can snap, it can point, it can do all these different things, but just by itself, it's just a hand. Your brain is like the hand. It's just a thing that can do other things. The actions that take place within and with around your brain is essentially what creates mind. And in your mind is where you think. In your mind is where you imagine, where you play, where you do all of these amazing things that create the life that you <clears throat> are, are building. Unfortunately, in the mind is also where you worry, where you have anxiety, uh, where you build depression, right? And I always start with joy with these thoughts because your mind hears the words that you say and it reflects those. It reflects a lot more than that. And these rules of the mind, I'm not going to go over them right now, but I think you should absolutely read them because um, they are the tricks to training your mind in how to use it. Essentially, these are the rules that 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 say how the computer of your brain works. These are the software rules so that your mind does what you want it to do. If you've been experiencing uh, a lack of attention, like ADD type symptoms, then maybe some of these things that we do, uh, some of these rules of the mind can help you train yourself to be better. These are the rules of the mind that we apply in hypnotherapy um, as people learn about their own emotions, learn about their own state. Um, these are the things that, these are the tools that we use and that we teach to people so that they understand that really all of this external sensory stuff comes in, goes up to your brain, connects in the wire, connects the wires in the brain, these neural networks, and then the mind takes over. And really, the mind is just the pictures and the words that you have put through that it detects and creates its own mental image inside your brain, inside your head. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, reading these, the, the, the most important thing is that your mind responds to the pictures and the words that you give it. If you give it bad pictures and words, that's what sticks and programs it more precisely. If you um, give it positive pictures and words, then it actually triggers looking for more positive pictures and words. The system itself is called the reticular activating system. What you feed into it is what your brain looks for more of. It's a very powerful thing. Okay, so now we've gone over the exercises. 
And I've also given you a couple extra, you know, directions and hints about how to look at these exercises. You know, it's it's the starting point. It's where we are now. Next week, we will be adding a couple more exercises and a couple more um, extra sheets like the, the rules of the mind to help you learn how to be a better you. And that's really what manifest design is about is, you know, I just want to give you a big picture right here because manifest design is a branding process. It's what I use with businesses. It's what I've learned uh, in my, my design master's program. It's what I learned after the master's program. It's what I put together from a lot of other experts and um, behavioral experts, marketing experts, um, sales experts. It's what I put together to help you define what that brand should be and learn how to communicate it outwards. But part of this process is understanding that it is so much about your mind and your perception, right? And the more that we can train the mind as we're going through this process, the more that we can help you understand at a subconscious and unconscious and a conscious level, as well as a super conscious level, I'll get to that later, um, that you are building what you want right now. And as you build it, as you focus on what you want and, and everything that you're growing, you are starting to manifest it into your life. And like I said, the reticular activating system looks for things that you want and, and literally finds those in the world around you to show you more of that. It's that powerful. And that's why this is called the manifest design experience. You are designing the business, the brand, the person you want to be. And every step of this process is designed by me to help you start building that business, building the marketing, building the sales, building the platforms, building the app, building whatever it is you want to build, but also building you and training your mind to look for all the positive things that give you the reinforcement to know you are on the right path because your subconscious automatically does that for you. And as we train you and your subconscious on this path, you become stronger, you become more able to um, just move forward, right? Coping mechanisms, uh, you, you can cope with anything. You can manage through anything. You, you learn that you have to grit the determination to do everything you want to do because you've already told your mind it's going to happen for you and your mind is going to make it happen for you because you told it. And each step along this process is going to help you get there. Now, the thing you don't get in this process in this group is the hypnotherapy at the end. Uh, I am a RTT hypnotherapist. That's rapid transformation therapy. I'm a certified hypnotherapist because, and that's really the final step in the process. I believe it's super powerful because it takes all of this information and then we use hypnotherapy to really put it deep into your subconscious, deep into your mind so that you know that moving forward is just a matter of success. It's just a matter of time and movement and success. Every small step. And that's why it's manifest design, because you are manifesting everything that you are designing right now. You are designing your life, you are designing your business, and then you are moving down the process to manifest it into your life. And that, that's, that's worthwhile, right? Living the life that you want to live, manifesting it, creating it, um, designing it first. That's just, it's awesome stuff. Um, so that's what I've got for today. Next Friday, 2 p.m., I will go live. I will go over the exercises from next week. I definitely encourage you to um, post your exercises, post uh, your answers, share who you are, put a picture of yourself up in this group, put a video of yourself up. I love seeing pictures. I love seeing video. It's really important that you put yourself out there. And, uh, you know, you can see I'm a, I'm a real person. I'm sweating here in my, house, in my apartment and... Uh, uh, I'm trying to get all this stuff in order and talk to you. You know, this is a, a real person, a real thing. We're just, uh, it's not highly commercial. And that's cool. That's how you know this is a safe space, right? We are just being people building the lives that we want to build step at a time. If you are, um, and, and I, I will tell you, you know, I, I have to make a, a pitch here, an offer, because... Uh, there are some people that don't want to wait the time to get through this entire process that are working on their business, working on their brand, working on trying to build whatever it is you're trying to build. If that's you, if you are interested in hiring me, I am available uh, to do this entire process with just you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, it, it can take anywhere from a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on your timing and how much you really want to invest in yourself, in your future, and in this brand, in this process. And uh, so if that's, if that's the case, if you're interested in, in knowing if, uh, 
this is right for you to get through quickly, then go ahead and check out my website, www.thinktankcreative.net, and you can schedule a free consultation right on that page. And for the rest of you, you know, do the exercises. Uh, give me feedback. I love to hear how you're doing, where you're struggling, because I want to tweak this. I want to make sure it's right for you. I want to make sure you understand and everything absolutely goes perfect. That's why I'm doing the exercises as well. Right? Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. That's why I'm doing the exercises as well and keeping a brand binder of it so that I can continue to move my other project, my health um, retreats up and forward um, as a perfect little example for you guys. And, you know, we're going to work through this together step by step. And we're going to have a ton of fun because really this is just play and this is creative play. And um, the more you can engage your imagination, the more you can engage your creativity and just play with it. Play with it. That is everything right there. Okay. It's everything. So thank you so much. Uh, you will find replays of this in... <clears throat> Well, this group, but also I'm going to post it in the guides so that the instructions are with the exercises themselves for more people as they join the group. Um, and if you know anybody that is building a brand, uh, building a business, uh, needing some marketing, needing positioning for whatever it is they're doing, they just need help thinking it through, invite them to the group. Tell them what's going on. Tell them that over the next several weeks, we're going to be doing tons of exercises and building, you know, the life that we love. Invite them on in because uh, I think that this is something that can transform millions of lives if we do this right. So thank you so much. Take care. I love you guys and have a great weekend.